Okay. Um, so first thing I want to do is change the AI behavior of this guy. Something like that, I guess. We'll see how that how that does. It's gonna go over pretty poorly. Okay, so we are right here. Where we need to go up there. Let's move on up. Hey. Um, eh. like maybe I should swap out a loss for Homeboy Slice right now. Oops. Actually, that, that might be the best idea. Well, no, he's my perception bot, isn't he? Yes, he is. Oh, can't click into the fog of war. That's interesting. Oh, I... I passed it. <laughs> the map is not that big. It's just really freaking big. Nukataka. Merchant vessel. Got a solution. All of my problems. You know what? Oh, I'll do that in a second. And for a port? Nekataka. We have found it. Now before I go in there, I need to do that. Okay. Oh, and, and do this. There we go. Okay. I don't know what to expect from the city. I've I've been looking up like how to fix the memory leak issues and things like that, and I've been running into a lot of posts saying that Nekataka is particularly dangerous when it comes to FPS. So yeah. Hopefully it's not gonna be too bad, but judging by this loading screen, it's gonna be pretty bad. the achievement Heart of the Deadfire or Heart of Deadfire. Hmm. Look at that chug.
As you walk down the dock, you or your approach is noted by a cadre of heavily armored Amawa. Their leader briskly leads you leads them to intercept you. The harbor master looms over you, not deigning to stoop or lower her gaze to your level. I'm a dwarf. You're far from home, farmer. How did you make it all this way in your little boat? The Amawa cranes her thick neck to look along the hull of your ship. Her expression conveys equal proportions in credulity and pity. I don't know. How to, I don't know how to say that quite correctly. Why do we gotta be farmers just because we're from Deerwood? Are you a farmer? Yeah, but you can't just assume. We got rabble rousers too. Man, you can't be saying that. Their attention returns to you. The Amawa's mood becomes more formal. I'm the harbor master, Kaoha. I must ask your reason for docking in Nekataka. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. Ugh. <laughs> Sure, let's just go with the far-fetched. I'm following a giant made of Adra, and I need someone in the palace, or I need to see someone in the palace about it. Her master chuckles to herself, as do the women and men behind her. Yeah, you do need to see someone, truly. I think it's the uh, Animancers and the Spire you're looking for. <laughs> to help with your head. The assembled guards roar with laughter and clap. The harbor or clap the harbor master on the back for her joke deep within you you feel an uncomfortable roiling you can't be certain if the sensation is physical or spiritual but it immediately induces nausea and fills your ears with the sound of blood rushing through your head cutting through the din you hear a familiar woman's voice speak each word comes slowly falling with what sounds like the chiming of a small bell show them Show them what you are. <laughs> um, I'm a watcher and the Herald of Barat. The whole dead fire is in danger. Please let me pass. I've heard enough. There's no room for you in Nekataka Harbor. Get back on your ship and head back to open sea. The harbor master gestures towards your boat. The women and men behind her nod and murmur in agreement. The nausea continues to build inside you, blood pounding against your skull. Again, the woman's voice. Again, the chimes. I will help you. What's the matter with you? What are you doing? If you're trying to scare us with some cipher mischief, save the purple flames for the tribes of the outer islands. The roar in your head begins to abate. The ringing of the chime becomes clearer, rhythmic. Two successful peals followed by, followed by a brief respite. You realize the chime is ringing in tandem with your own heartbeat. You open your eyes. The harbor master is je gesturing wildly, presumably to get your attention, and yelling in your face, but you hear no words, only the ringing of the chime as your heart rate slows and slows and slows and slows. <laughs> Now. What? What is this? Run for it! Huh? You got style, Cap. Worm riddle, ship sinking flat, fucking freaky style. You could say that again. Annex Intimidate. Man, barbarians just get like no abilities, man. Nothing. I was looking at that last time. I think we're gonna go with that. There's no way he's down in anybody, so we're gonna go with that. Hmm? 
All right, well, the docks are ripe for the picking. Indeed. Let's loot everything. Need a fresh jacket of pants? Something more delicate? If you have a frame, I can fit cloth to it without fuss. The tailor eyeballs your shoulder with doing some mental calculation. Take your time. I'll give you space to browse. Appreciate it, bruh. Transed steeled in darkness. During nighttime, this aura grants all nearby allies and clinging to wear a bonus to their stealth skill and resolve. Hey, that's cool. Got a little bit of money. Guy's got some stuff. Cloak of Deflection. Hello. Why is that so cheap? We're purchasing that. Answer's outfit. Honestly, I should probably buy this too. I mean, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. Uh, but that's fine. We'll just, just buy that. And we'll give it to the guy who desperately needs it. I guess it's on you. Give it to you. There we go. His defenses, they're so high. 34, it's so good. Man, he has the lowest defense. What is wrong with this guy? Any trouble? We just it is trouble. not as easy as it seemed to turn a profit in Neketaka, but there is opportunity. Care for a fish or two, stranger? Today's catch ripped straight from the hands of the sorry wench. The fishmonger lets out an accomplished sigh. You'll find no fresher. Have a look. Is this really all you sell is fish? Come on. Come on. Hey, he's level six finally. Welcome. Venturing out past this, of course. Right. Take your. I'm done with you. Uh... Oh, I could sell traps. I could sell. Period. <laughs> I haven't been doing that. Uh, go to weapons here. Great sword, probably not that great. Fine dagger. I think this game has bottomless um, inventory, which is so amazing. I absolutely despise it when I have to choose what goes in my inventory. It's just irritating. Did I see that right? This gives... No, it does not. The stilettos. Whatever that is. Got a lot of hot garbage up in here. Okay. That looks good to me. Take that back. 
Um, armor. Seven. That's a seven. They're basically the same thing. Let's get rid of these. Light armor for three. That's light armor for six. Get rid of these. I'll just clear out some of this garbage. Principal. Uh, we'll keep those. Here we go. These are the things that I should be getting rid of. That these sell for... Oh, 75. That's, that's pretty good. Grenade. Keep that for now. What am I going to do like all my trip... Or all those trip wires that I got? Don't get any of those? There you go, have some money. And <laughs> now you want to sell everything back to me. <laughs> oh, these uh these are kind of expensive, I guess. I don't know why. 9.2 second reload time, Jesus. Worker, the mod. Fedora, be with you in just a. <sighs> Almost had it. Damn your eyes. The sun-scarred dwarf gingerly picks at a splinter in his thumb, muttering, "Glad to see a client eye to eye for a change." He gives up with a frustrated grunt, shaking his hand. Came in on the sloop. I can hammer your ship together if you're apt to pay me for it. Zamar bares his teeth and grinds them hard enough to sound over the noise of the dock. Having trouble with the client? Aye. Captain Radora hasn't paid me for her commissioned firepower. Zamar pulls at the end of his beard and winces. While I'm up to my nose in debt, the wild mare gobbles up her coin. And now, pirates are holding my feet to the fire over some sham of a deal. Zamar winces and tugs harder on his beard in self-administered punishment. If I don't get Redora's payment, I might as well start carving my swallow net. Hmm. Hmm. I like the clever. Uh, if it gets me a discount on your labor, I could hunt down Redora. You do that? A fair price goes without saying, Cully. Mara untangles his hand from his beard and to link his thumb and forefinger with a wink. It all comes down to blasted pans and pyres in the end, doesn't it? Mara spits towards the dock, piling, pilings, pillings, and glances back at the work still yet to be done. You see uh, what you got. Come take a look. The birds have come back. I, I, I looked at the VOD last time, and I'm pretty sure you can hear that. That's a lot of stuff. This is a lot of stuff. We might have to uh, come back to this guy. Let's look for other people to talk to.
the trading company headquarters. Aeothus, light of spring, son of the world, thou givest me life and purpose. Gone shepherds us all, traveler. Seek out his temple along the sacred stair, that thy path shall be made clear. I haven't saved in a what? Not a bit. That is the house. Have to bust out another thing of chips. Man, I didn't, I didn't think that one was going to be that crazy. Uh, can I talk to you, please? Lodger. Servant. Ship hunter. Wolf. We're full up, I'm afraid. If you're looking for lodging, you'll have to hope there's room at the tavern. This family scribe offers you a pleasant smile, but seems preoccupied preoccupied by other matters. You rent rooms here? We do indeed. Forgive me if I mistook you for a tenant. There are quarters set aside upstairs. Passers by with a bit of extra coin will find a welcome cot and a meal. This is a temporary measure, of course. Clears her throat and glances away. Why rent rooms at all, much less for short-term stays? It's not my place to share the dealings of the Valera family, but this is all rather public. She frowns and glances around the ha house self-consciously. Suffice it to say that a family in want of coin might find alternate means of securing their finances. In the case of this estate, that means renting the occasional room. No shame in making a practical sacrifice. But I've said enough. Speak with Atello if you have business with the Valera household. How's business? Well, as they say, business can always be better, yes? I'm sure I needn't bore you with the details. Scrab bites her lower lip and diverts her gaze. Who's in charge here? You'll find Atello Valera upstairs in his study. Farewell. Let's see. Oh. Let's read this. By read it, I mean not read it. Waste time while I open up these, uh, these things of chips here. Just, uh, you know, scroll down a little bit. Do all that important stuff. Let the viewers read these things for once. I'm just kidding. We're not going to read this. Um, I don't think I want that. But, I mean, I can take it. Wow. Nothing bad will happen to me. Maybe one of these days I'll read this stuff. <laughs> Not likely, but maybe one day. Worth a look. Well, well, well. A secret. Go ahead and uh, swipe that. Yeah, thank you very much. I think we already read that one. Mind me. Stealing your stuff.
guard. All right. Let's see, I don't know where that goes. Guessing outside. Or not. Yes. And upstairs. Yes, I said I upstairs. There. Who you be? Who you want to keep? Like that. Oh, so when they say lodger, they actually mean, like, person staying here. There's Atello Valera. Ah, a new face in the Valera holds. Tello Valera's face is lined and weary, but his coat is tidily buttoned, his posture faultless. Well, Axelrod, at your service. Courtly manners are welcome here. He inclines his head. My time is not inexhaustible, but I am willing to spare it. He opens his palms and invites you to continue. What can I do for you? Uh, what does your family do for the Valerian Trading Company? Valera ships escort goods and merchants from island to island across Deadfire. The Principi dogs show us their stern whenever they spot Valera colors on the horizon. Leave it to a swabby from the Republics to think a pirate showing them their rear be a compliment. <laughs> he only chuckles at his own joke. Just like he chuckled at his own joke. Um, uh, peace. Talk to you. A new face to the Valera Halls. And aren't we all so excited to see you? Martino Valera grins from ear to ear. This guy's a little salty. I always make time for chatter. Say what you will. What do you bring to the Valera household? Is drama an acceptable answer? His grin widens. I would totally understand. I make sure the wine cellar is stocked, and that sons and daughters alike know how to carry a blade. Peace. All right, can't take from anything up here. Fine, it's fine. You're a lodger, you're a ship hunter. They probably don't want to be stealing. Interesting. All right, let's get out of here. Gotta be on the lookout for new party members. You never know where they might be. Huh? Commoner. Where is my pot? My dico. Where is that spoiled brat? A woman in fine clothes clutches a ledger in both hands. She searches the faces of passerbys, settling on yours with an uncertain frown. What seems to be the problem, miss? Laro is past due for a company meeting. Mother wants me to drag the elusive louse back by his ear. She tucks the book under her arm. Must be nice to be a layabout. Uncle Angbert would have tanned my hide. Edward nods in agreement. Fuck. I am angry and jealous in equal measure. You'd think this district was a maze, the way he manages to hide. He glances over your shoulder and sighs, then looks back at you with a sudden recognition. Fuck. 
A face from the motherland is a welcome sight. If you desire to get in the graces of the Valiant Trading Company, we can help each other. What sort of clout do you have with the trading company? Mother's Bank commands the wealth of the Deadfire campaign. Nera absently pats the cover of her ledger. Could I persuade you to watch out for Laro? I'd pay generously for your trouble. Hmm, I like that. Study her hands. Nera has been digging her nails into her ledger, leaving crescent moon-shaped impressions in the binding. She notices your interest and holds the book protectively close. I... I'm concerned because Laro tends to feud with Orso, one of the local Valero rats. Hmm. Uh, I take it your mother is someone important. It's Ali Bardato. The Valiant Trading Company leans on her to finance their mission. If only more of her offspring were as accomplished. Nera raises her free hand and squeezes the bridge of her nose. <laughs> uh, you aren't exactly tearing the district apart looking for him. Of course, see. I only manage the family business. Takes up her ledger in both hands, holding it like a shield. Better to ask why Laro isn't sprinting back to look after his birthright. What did you mean by Valera Rat? <laughs> The Valeras, a brood of sea vermin playing at nobility. She hefts her ledger as if to bring it down on a pest. We squabble and compete, <clears throat> but Laro, the Pastinago, takes it too far. Um, as long as the Valiant Trading Company recognizes my usefulness, we can call it a deal. Fuck, consider it done. I mean again? Okay. Uh, she flips open the ledger and hastily scribbles in a column, licking the nib of her quill. There. She snaps the book shut. Laro and his miscreant friends carouse at the tavern, the falls above the Adra Mill, and the southwestern bridge. If you see him, tell Laro to get his good-for-nothing ass back home. Language. Well, we do have this thing with chasing a rogue god to the ends of Aora, but I guess if it's on the way... Okay. Oh, trading companies down there. Wild mare. Road south. That's the ship, dude. Map Emporium. Oh, we didn't go into the back alley. I guess we're going south. The Hazanui is at the palace, blaming the Valians for attacking one of their ports. Well, did they? Of course not. But the Queen must calm them down before they go to war. Well met, stranger. Akira, but isn't this district a fine place? The Huana woman stares off into the distance with a longing expression. And this makes you... Uh, turn to see what she's looking at. She doesn't settle on any point of particular interest. Everything from the high buildings to the cobblestones is the subject of fascination. She notices your attention and turns your eyes to the ground. I am not one meant to venture far from the gullet. Until recently, I... I had a respectable job at the Luminous Bathhouse. Now that I am unemployed, I seek to make myself useful before the money runs out. And I must return to the Roparu as a pauper. She frowns and turns her gaze back up to you. Uh, well, I mean, she should look back down because I'm a dwarf. Um, how did you lose your job at the bathhouse? More happens at the bathhouse than cleanliness and ease. It is a place of meetings, business, and transactions to all of which the attendants are either blind or deaf. One day, I overheard more than I ought to have. In my airing, I gasped. To my great shame, I showed a most unprofessional reaction before clients. I was fired, and rightly so. 
She bows her head. Uh, you worked at the bathhouse? A wonderful place. Would that I could cross its threshold again and feel the mist of luminous waters. Her smile is sad, if genuine. In spite of my time there, I cannot do else but give it my highest recommendation. You will find the luminous bathhouse in Periki's Overlook. What did you overhear in the bathhouse to cause such a scandal? Akima shakes her head and lowers it in deep shame. She's trembling, and it's clear that, in her estimate, she has suffered enough without debasing herself even further. Uh, could you direct me to the Kanga Palace? Akira, you want to follow the road north, up the mountain, always climbing. It is the highest point in the city. Tell me about Queen's birth. The Queen granted this area of the city to the Valian outsiders. Here they organized their business and trade, digging up the archipelago with both hands and carrying riches overseas. She glances toward the docks. In her welcoming embrace, the Queen allowed a similar concession to the Royal Deadfire Company. You would do well to see as much of Nekataka while you are here, I am thinking. Peace. Hmm. Well, that's not the case. Merla! How is every ship hunter taken? Got one right here. No sooner has you approach the valley and woman than she squints and turns up her or turns yeah, turns up her nose, regarding you with a thinly veiled distaste. I only deal with serious clients. Now shoo. She makes a sweeping gesture with both hands. What sort of business are you in? Not the business of answering questions, Nazenale. Madiko, but it is impossible to find skilled work when every competent freelancer wastes their shore leave in the wild mare. She grimaces towards the east. When blood travels south of their brains, the value of a good bounty is forgotten. Why aren't more sailors accepting work? Ugh, but I blame Luminous Adra. Uh, she folds her arms and exhales sharply through her nose. Our privateers are busy escorting shipments out of the dead fire. Everyone is rich. No one is hungry. Where are the casitas willing to sink their enemies for a bag of pies, huh? Drunk on success. He waves derisively toward the east. Like as a casitas. Uh, what bounties do you have available? I do not make a habit of shepherding new talent, but, ach, there is a seed of potential. She sighs to herself and peers over your shoulder before giving up and addressing you directly. We will cut your teeth on Biakara, a Juana sailor and would-be patriot who plagues company ships. I'll take the bounty. Gelarde! Biakara sails a voyager scale of Tangaloa off of Hasongo's northeastern coast. Uh, that, that's, that's a lot of words that I just don't even know. Um, Ayana studies you once more before shrugging and seeing you off with the wave. Uh, I got some questions before I go. Questions? Ask your questions, Aimiko. I ain't got no questions. All right, let's let's go to the bar now. We're gonna be like every other sailor she hates. I don't have a voice for shanties these days. Too much salt in the air. Uh, you don't like salt in the air, man. Listen out. Got salt on these chips. Made a bomb diggity. It's not like those those tiny grains of salt. It's like a powder of salt. I don't. I don't. I don't. I just don't know. But it's tasty. We got a musician. I bet my guy could talk to the musician. Do you enjoy a coin, my friend? He can you lift the sword? At you. Alien commoner, dock worker. Hail and welcome to the wild mare, friend. A jovial man at the bar grins and motions you closer. His arms are corded with a th with thick muscle and cross hatched with scars. 
Now, what can I do for you? Show me what you have to say. You see anything you like, you let me know. Backstage storage room? Oh, oh, these are resting places. Whoa. Whoa. Private dance room. Uh, so yeah, these these are rooms to sleep in. Kind of cool that I can sleep for free. Uh, the guy sells some stuff. We can recruit some dudes. We can recruit some dudes. We can retrain. And we can change our party. Which I actually am going to do. Sorry, bro. You can get the step in. Oh. Can you take off the hat, bro? Okay, that, that's interesting. I'm gonna take all that. You're uh, you're fired, yeah. Ruben. What can I do? You see anything you like? Bye. level this brother up okay so I need to retrain him hey there we go we're gonna start all over with now, a lot what can I do you see anything have a mechanics guy don't have a stealth guy crazy about explosives light a hand yeah. I guess we don't need insight. You're already running insight. What world do I have you for? I guess we can go metaphysics. These mechanics. Maybe stealth, I guess. So I don't really care about stealth. I guess we can go this. And well, I guess stealth will help out other stuff. I think sleight of hand is cooler though. Go stealth. Okay. So, I'm still going to go with this build. Uh, which makes me wonder why I spent 500 on all this, but whatever. I think the build sounds cool. That. Probably not going to give you that. Give you that.
stealth, metaphysics, and sounds good. He's going to be using his... Oh, maybe not. Go chill fog. Alright, so you have scepters. Go quarter staffs again. Stealth. Metaphysics. Um, pressing all beneficial effects on enemies in the area. That sounds fantastic. Additionally, many deflection and reflex attacks that score hits will be converted to grazes. Last 45 seconds, yes please. Turn you into a like a tank of sorts. Oh, this is a weapon. Yeah, well, take that. Much. Health, metaphysics. We get one more. Probably gonna get the dampening. Hmm. This is another weapon. I think we'll hold off on that for right now and grab this because this just seems pretty good. All right. I'm here. He's pretty weak HP department. Even he has more defense. Like, what the heck? Give you that. Give you your hat back. I'm gonna wear this for accuracy. Guess we'll give it to you. Does Martyr's Memories do again? Oh, that's just kind of blah. Anybody not wearing a necklace? Nope. Attacks with the Keybreaker Scepter can bounce. Is that a separate thing? Oh, that, that's, that's a 
face. Bounce is pretty cool. More of disruption. Oh, you would already get that. <clears throat> Go to wizards. What does your current one give you? I'm not actually crazy about those. Go with this one instead. Okay, and anything else that I want to do? We can rest now, here. What can I do for you? You're in luck, friend. The Wild Mare employs a number of courtesans skilled in satisfying a wide range of tastes and interests. Throws you an exaggerated wink and points towards the stairs behind him. <laughs> You'll find them upstairs. They handle their own coin, too, so no need to go through me. Be seeing you. Okay. Indeed. Indubitably. Where in the places is that old man? We'll talk to Luca. My one solace from the tedious bureaucracy. Addo, my friend. I knew our paths would cross eventually. Valian shouts over the din of the wild mare to get your attention, turning a great many heads to study your exchange. He takes a hearty swig of this tankard. Um, I bet you say that to all your clients. Que? No, you mistake me. I am not one of the courtesans. Tell me, you are the one who sails that fine ship, Ak? Terrorize the docks with spirits, Ak? Leaning in close, he sips from the tankard and loudly sucks moisture from his upper lip. Um, who's asking? I am Aboko, and I am positioned to offer... Uh, I have opportunities for... He clumsily unfolds a sheaf of parchment. The tankard slips in his grasp and spills ale down the front of his trousers. He gawks down at himself in horror. Thousand times I practiced my speech. Merda. Never did it go this poorly. Uh, just... Just tell me what you want. I am supposed to be in the business of giving bounties, but I know no one who hunts them. He stamps his feet, kicking up a spray of spilled ale. No one will unfurl their sail for my humble payments. But I must start from the bottom and work my way to the top, Ak. Um... What bounties do you have available? You... you will take the job? You will take the job. He grips you by the shoulder and smiles, tears springing to the corners of his eyes. Agrasima. Something special for my first hunter, then. Drains the tankard and tucks it under his arm to retrieve his sheaf of notes. Ah, I will start you on Meriel, the mad animancer. She tortures her victims with unspeakable treatments before casting what's left to Bereth's will. My contacts saw her leaving Port Maje and heading west of Maje Island. I'll return with her head. Farewell. Cool. Oh boy. Oh, Captain Radora, I think I've been looking for you. You say I cannot down the rest? <laughs> Watch me, Aimiko. A valiant sailor raises her tankard and arches her back to invite a torrent of ale down her expectant mouth. Holding this pose with nothing to show for it, she taps the tankard's base and furrows her bow, brow at its apparent emptiness. Her companion shakes his head and focuses his attention elsewhere. Madiko, it is no wonder I thirst. As she wipes her mouth with the back of her hand, her eyes widen and meet yours. Ado, why do you stare? Hmm. You don't seem to be having as much fun as the rest of the clientele. 
Uh, the fun ran dry with the coin. She manages a wan smile. When the dancers see more than an empty purse, I will be a content radora. She sighs up at the stage. Uh, your next grog is on me. A grassima. Even in the oasis, I am parched. He pockets the coins and glances past you at the bar. If you grant wishes, there is a vacancy on my ship. Redora's frown cracks to reveal a shy smile. Yet another reminder that not every seaworthy vessel be crewed up to the standards of the sorcerer. He shakes his head. Uh, as the captain of the Defiant, I'm already taken. This one. Medora inclines her head. I'm sorry, brother. Next time around the wheel, perhaps. Damar sent me to collect your debt. Merla, and he hired muscle. Medora takes a shaky step back. Sientere, but you are too late to collect. She holds out her palms and flinches at the blow that doesn't come. A gang in the northern alley stole every coin. I cannot hire a crew, much less repay Zamar. Dora slowly lowers her trembling hands. Streetwise. I do need to bump that up. Uh, Zamar is having some pirate trouble. Could this gang be connected? If they wanted Zamar to thirst for coin, uh, it is possible. Botsos will regret it when I turn my cannons to their mast. Dora raises her empty mug as the vow is struck. Those the cannons you be waiting for Zamar to cast you. Because I'd be seeing more holes in that plan than in any Principe mast's future or no. His green eyes pry at her from over crossed arms. Why don't you tell me what happened? The wizard lights drew me like a moth to the alley north of the wild mare. Her eyes turned downcast. And the blow to the back of the head that followed, Merlight hurt. She touches a spot behind her ear and hisses. Then a wolf sat on my chest while a group of thugs went through my pockets. Mm. Uh, a wolf? Ah, it growled like a thunderstorm and drooled on my uniform. Redora pats a stain on her shoulder. I stumbled back here and traded all I had left for the comforts of the mare. Hmm. <laughs> Attack! Uh, sounds like my quarrel's with this gang. Farewell. When you got their leader, tell them Radora sent you. She raises her mug and winks. Thank you, Radora. Who you? A young woman lingers near the stage with the mug of ale clutched tight in her hands. Though she shows no interest in the dancers, the bags beneath her eyes speak to many long nights uh, spent drinking in the tavern. She looks lazily about the room until her gaze alights with, on you with interest. Have you seen an old elf hanging around here lately? Dress is funny, probably drunker than an eel in a barrel of mead. An old elf. Have I seen that elf? Who is she talking about? I don't know who she's talking about. Uh, let's go one. As serendipity would have it, I met him not long ago. You have? Where? Oh. Aha. Hmm. I mean, he's with us now, so. Uh, in Humongous Pyramid. Dedicated to Wodaka out in the middle of nowhere. Don't keep me in suspense. What happened to him? Um. He died. 
Did he have any coin on him? Old Coot owed me 5,000 copper. 5,000. Skullduggery. The, despite her cold words, tears begin to well in her eyes. She blinks them away without comment. Um... I think I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going with this line. Oh, he had loads of coins, lo lots of gold, some silver, a huge sack of coppers. With a windfall like that, surely you can spare me the money I'm owed? Um. <laughs> oh. Did I say loads? I meant broke. Oswald was dead broke. Andra's pendulous teats, that charlatan cheated me. She slams her fist down on the table. <laughs> Thanks for the information. I can't say I like what I heard, but I'm glad to be done with this nonsense all the same. Khan gives you a curt nod and downs the remainder of her drink in one gulp. He hustles out the door without passing, pausing to look back. Interesting. Ahoy, Captain. Uh, if I could bend your ear a moment, uh, I'll be aiming to thank you for bringing me aboard. I think she was part of the, the, uh, those, those dudes that are looking for him. Craziness. Uh, a furred hand at his, at his belly and one out, he bows deeply, drooping ear almost touching the ground. You run a tight shop, and you ain't no terrible person, neither. It'd be a welcome change from the gentleman of leisure. Uh, you're welcome. I have a gift for you. This trinket be from one of the first ships I hunted. Malnage would have snatched it had I not found the perfect hiding spot. So where did you hide it? Oh, now were I to tell you that, you mightn't want it no more. <laughs> That's what I thought. Seraphin gives an innocent whistle while scratching his booty uh, as subtly as one could scratch it. Yeah. <laughs> Just a jest, Cap. Nay, no, I tucked it away in my beard. Didn't wear braids back then, so my hair caught about everything from feathers to fish bones. Malnar shook me down for plunder after each raid, and I figured out she wouldn't go nowhere near my beard. Said my face were like a saw rip fetish. Uh, so why did Malnar treat you so badly? Don't really know for sure, Cap. Thought at first she wanted me. Lasses be that way sometimes, treating you worse the more they fancy you. Given she tried to get me killed twice within our first fortnight together, I thought mayhap she were in deepest love. He chuckles quietly. Uh, so what, so what was the issue? As I said, uh, I never rightly figured it out. It worked that I were all in, given she were too. Romaro said she might have been emerald green with envy, but, uh, I'll be well self if I know what's of. He shrugs his palms up. Red wine. Um. <laughs> uh, maybe she thought you were a threat. As a ship hunter, uh, mayhaps. I've certainly outpaced her since, if I do say so myself. Mayhaps she saw that coming. Thank you for the gift, Seraphim. Uh, you be entirely welcome. Now, if you'll pardon me, I've roundabout reached my limit for sentiment. Erfin salutes, grinning broadly, and turns away. Uh, I wonder... You told me a few years ago that I'd end up following you on another crazy errand. I'd have said you were out of your mind. Gives you a dismissive gesture with his pipe hand. Not because I got anything against you, more that... Trouble seems to come looking for you wherever you go. Yet, here we are again, probably on our way to die. Well... You already did, but me, I mean. He cocks his head to one side and smiles. Um. Here we are. Wouldn't you know it, this time is shaping up to be crazier than the last one. There's something accusatory behind Edder's eyes. But I gotta say, I appreciate how you've handled things. Times like these, staying decent's not as easy as it sounds. Not that I don't got questions about your moral fiber, but you surprised me. <laughs> uh, it 
hasn't always been easy. Well, that's why I mention it. Sometimes it's been anything but. I've been meaning to ask, though. How is it you never seem to lose your way through all this? What is it tells you you're on the right path? We ain't going with none of that soppy stuff. <laughs> I like option five. I have strong feelings about it. Uh... I judge every situation on its own circumstances and leave feelings out of it. Well, that's quite a feat. You gotta tell me your secret someday. Better heaves a sigh that sounds as if he's been building up, or it's, it's been building up for months. His smile's tight-lipped, wistful. When I was a boy, things were simpler. Aethys was more like a character we read about in church. Easier to worship a god when their worst traits are swept under the rug. Yeah, I guess it was. Well, most stories had him helping folks or making the world work as it should. He adopts the smile and gently pointed finger of a coaxing parent. You pray to him. He might help you too. He lets the finger drop and the smile fade. There was no cost to it. No confusion about his will or followers taking it to extremes. Following Aethys was right. I had no reason to question. He pauses. It could be the light, but the creases around his eyes and mouth seem longer and deeper than your memory of them. Do you think there's any way that following him could still be the right path? And after all we've seen? It's possible, if the cause is just. Oh, what? Five. Five is so good. I'm gonna go with that. Of course, even Barath wants us to follow him. <laughs> I suppose that's true. Not really a point in Aethys' favor, though. Anyway, I didn't mean for this to get depressing. I think this was just a long way of saying, I appreciate the way you've guided things. It makes me feel like I'm doing some good, going with you. He shakes his head with a look on his face like he just remembered a joke. I, I find it hilarious that the dancers up here have been changing throughout this entire time. Uh, what did I get? Oh, me the loot. Okay. That's, that's good. Don't know who I would give it to. Dexterity affliction. Yes, maybe you. Nah. Actually, Constitution would give you more HP. Oh, we'll, we'll do that. It's fine, I guess. Oh, I'll give her a bad rap. I want to the backstage area. I haven't found uh, the upstairs area, though. Oh, over here. Cook. Go upstairs. Music's nice. Commoner. 
Ymir. See something you like? The dancer turns to greet you, a coy smile tugging at his lips. He's short for an elf, but no less graceful for his lacking height. Uh, his long face and dark eyes lend him a solemn air, but any hint of gloom is chased away by the wash of color in his cheeks. Aloth, this is the last place I expected to see you. Have your interests changed so much since our time at Bragon Hill? A grin lights up Ymir's face. He fidgets with his hair self-consciously, soothing it down where it, it's been must. Mm, no, I still enjoy tile puzzles and deflecting personal questions. Anyway, what are you doing here? Looks away as though he's trying to ignore Ymir's gaze. <laughs> I could ask the same of you. He laughs lightly, a hand over his mouth. I make my own hours, meet fascinating people, and the coin's nothing to sneer at. Better than stuffy old books and unflattering robes. He casts a critical eye over a lost outfit. He opens his mouth to speak, but decides better of it. I want to say nothing. It's good to see you again, Eloth. Anyway, I should get back to it. Be well. He smiles warmly at Eloth, blushing, blush coloring the tips of his ears. It was lovely seeing you. He catches himself, looking panicked. Perhaps lovely is too strong a word. I meant pleasant. Uh, perfectly agreeable. He looks at you, chagrined. I can see where I may have confused the poor fellow in our academy days. Did you enjoy the show? There's more to see, if you're interested. Uh, no. Till later, then. Just looking for people to talk to. A young woman reclines on the cushions, a hookah hose held delicately in one, delicately in one hand. Eyes closed, she sings to herself. Her voice is soft and inviting. She doesn't move when she hears you approach, but slowly opens her eyes with a lazy smile. Come. Lay your head on my breast. I will read you the work of my favorite poet, Skilba. Tell me about yourself. It's futile to attempt to summarize the whole of a person in simple words. How to capture their dreams, the desires of another, their feel and taste. But I appreciate your curiosity nonetheless. I am an actor. <laughs> Trained from childhood. Difficult for you to believe, I'm sure. A teasing smile pulls at the corner of her lips. Her voice is wistful, almost melancholic. My troupe were my family, and we traveled the whole of the Adir Empire, performing the classic literatures to cheering audiences. Sounds like a pleasant life. The work was good when the crowds were grateful, and their pockets swelled with coin. Gives you a pained smile and looks away. I found a more dependable application of my talents here. To touch the hearts of others with my voice. I could not give that up. Have you come to hear some verse? Uh, how much for your time? One hundred copper pans. A reasonable fee to experience the sublime words of a dear's greatest poets. Don't you think? Come. Lay your head on my breast. I will read you the work of my favorite poet, Skilba. I think I'm gonna pass, but I saved your buddy Oswald. Not from something too dangerous, I hope. Please, accept my thanks. He's a kind old man. I would have mourned to see something terrible happen to him. Clasps your... She clasps yours hands. Bible number five, I believe. Uh in hers and gives you uh gives them a little squeeze i have little to give you in thanks perhaps you'd be amenable to some establishment gossip Ooh. <laughs> she raises a well-sculpted brow and gives you a cheery little wink constantin the masseuse longs to wander the world again every time he threatens to leave gintel begs him to stay and every time he promises to remain for just a month more I wonder what he hopes to find out there. Uh, goodbye. Farewell. Thanks for the gossip.
person? This is a person. A fire godlike woman polishes her pair of stocks, tending to them with the fondness of a mother for her favorite child. The room is dim, illuminated only by the glow of her steel forged skin. Her eyes burn with the light of Magrin's fire. When she hears you enter, she shoots you a look of utter contempt. I will give you an experience you won't soon forget. Bye. <laughs> Not looking to get burned tonight. Constantin. A burly dwarven man hums a jaunty tune to himself as he as he fastidiously organizes his collection of scented oil. See, I could say some of those complicated words. Uh, when he hears you enter the room, he greets you with a smile and a humongous outstretched hand. His grip is strong and sure. Come to seek ablution for your sins. <laughs> he slaps his knee with a bark of laughter. Get it? Ablutions? Absolution? Ha! I crack myself up. Gets me every time. He wipes a tear from his eye, still chuckling. Massage? Bath? Whatever you need. Just ask. How did you end up here? Oh, you don't want to hear about that. I lived a boring life, so there wouldn't be much to the telling. He crosses his thick arms over his chest. A slight blush spreads across his cheeks. Indulge me. Uh, truth be told, my real passion is pottery. <laughs> Trouble is, I got these big hands. <laughs> Not meant for delicate work. He turns his hand, or he turns his hands, palm up for you to inspect. Just one is easily large enough to cover your entire face. Worked out in the end, of course. Now I specialize in relieving tension in a mower and death godlike. He nods to himself. You seem bored here. <sighs> I guess I can't hide my feelings as well as I thought I could. <laughs> Gives you a nervous chuckle and scratches his beard. The stability's good and all, but uh, I haven't seen anything that gets my blood pumping in ages. You know what I mean? What's life without a little excitement? Doing the same old thing day in, day out. It's enough to make a man leap from the nearest window. He nods vigorously. You could come with me. Where to? He raises an inquisitive brow. Large hands previously dancing with restless energy still. You know that 700 foot tall statue made of Adra? I'm going after it. No kidding. He nearly drops a bottle of massage oil in his excitement. <sighs> I like to see something like that for myself. <sighs> he sighs a wistful edge in his voice. Do you think I could come with you? Just for a bit. Grab your things then. Let's go. Hell, you don't have to tell me twice. Hey. Uh, ship member or crew member? Oh, no. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Heck yeah. Uh, sidekicks start out as unique NPCs integral to specific quests. The quests complete with their own personalities and looks, and they may offer to join your party as a reward for completing their quest. Just like companions, these new characters have a custom portrait and voice sound set. However, unlike companions, they do not have their own vision quest and will not participate in the companion relationship system. What? How do I know who's a sidekick and who's a companion? Okay, so I have I've I've had a barbarian. I have not been impressed. So we're gonna go with Chanter. We're going to accept that party composition for the time being because I need to get rid of all of Alos stuff. One boy needs to get the step in. That stuff. We're gonna, we're gonna take these as well. 
you can you can keep that, I guess. Um. Then. I shall put it to good use. I want to change my party composition. How do I do that? Right now. I guess I can't do that right now. Things go faster. First, oh, there was a dude right there. I need to go talk to the chick too. Oh, I need to probably not watch this guy streaming. He's, he's a little far ahead of me, but you know it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Oh, you're just a commoner. How in the world want my party? Two more people I want to talk to in here. Uh, there was a guy over here in the corner. I see death around the corner. Cat is freaking out right now. You are a glutton for punishment, I see. I will give you an experience you won't soon forget. Tell me about yourself. I must assume the question beneath your question is how a fire godlike came to find herself in a place such as this. She leans back against the wall of chains. They clank and rattle, and she smiles at the sound. Perseverance. Being as I am, I have been forced to find it for myself. Now, I teach it to others. To live in a world as a thinking, feeling creature, it is difficult. It demands strength, but we cannot always be strong. I help those who have lost their strength to find it again. He wraps a chain around her arm and tugs. The steel links glow red and with forged fire where they touch her skin. All right, guess I can't recruit you. I think I'm going to go back to the boat, recruit homeboy Slice. We're going to have two summoners and it's going to be fantastic. I don't need allies. Who needs that sucker? Although I'll probably make Constantine, Constantin, a little more. How would I put it? Man, I don't know. Shh. Keep your voices down, my cullies. I'm trying to talk crap. Wealthy gentleman.
head back to the boat. before they're killing each other. Wager on it? Oh, and now Port Marge is behind us. I thought this would be a relief. has to be a way they're like just has to be a way to change your party from this font Party manager, Pete. Sailing on a ship. Well, going to sea. Get into Nekataka. Go to the Wild Mare. Wow, you have no hit points, dog. Light armor. Some better stuff than that. Give you a plus to resolve. Give you this. Who are you using? A fine pole axe. I don't know how I feel about that. We might come back to that. I might give him a bow. Bow sounds fun. And since you're gonna basically be my main tank, might as well just make you super tanky. Um. Do a fine sword. Actually, we'll just give you that. Actually, we should just give you this. Exceptional Alex. Um, a Kato over here. All right, so can you use a Grimoire? For some reason he just has that, that slot there and I'm just like might as well try. Uh Alright, let's level him up. Quick save. Okay. Oh, he's a sleight of hand guy. Excellent. He's also a bluff. Buff? Um, so we lost our metaphysics and it's fine, I don't, I don't care about metaphysics. 
So he can go into bluff. Bluff has been a lot of fun thus far. Streetwise, I feel like, is pretty nice though. So I'm gonna go streetwise. Okay. You're a scald. Weapon critical hits a 50% chance. Grant a phrase. Non offensive invocations cost one phrase to cast. Dang it. That makes him a very poor summoner. But I will still summon with him. I'll just be summoning less. Let's see. We'll grab that. Constitution is pretty high. Oh, well, we lost our perception bot, didn't we? That's not good. But hand, streetwise. I'm gonna grab you. Concentration for effect. It's resistant to resolve and constitution afflictions. So we're gonna go with that, maybe. <laughs> Offensive. Oh, no. On offensive. Go with that, I guess. Hold on a second. Um, game. Okay. Back to leveling up this guy. Weapon type. You can use axes and maces. Then why do you have a pole arm? Right, we're gonna give you a hunting bow. All right, slide a hand streetwise. Alrighty, each time the enemy takes damage, the duration is increased. Pretty nice. Uh, these bolts now bounce to additional targets. That's nice. Accuracy of disengagement attacks. That's whatever. Reload time and recovery time for ranged attacks for all allies. That's good. Using that one. Um, Brighton. I'm going to go with that. And streetwise. One ability. Go ahead and grab that. 
tempting to grab that, but going to. All right, he is leveled up. Oh, chance. Um, build raw damage. Not really gonna be up in people's face if I'm gonna give them a bow. Okay. Wow, that cost four chance. Jesus. That's a lot. Oh well. Uh, why not? Let's move on. We'll, maybe we'll find someone later on to replace him for summoning. Having fun out here in the dock. There's like a ah a tab button. Dim in the lantern. I'd like it to be the alt button. But um Take it. Uh, you duck down into the canal and find yourself kneeling before an iron grate. The reek of sewage wafting from the other side is powerful enough to bring tears to your eyes. The iron bars are set firmly into the surrounding brick, barring any passage onward. Uh, I don't, I don't want to do this right now. Apparently we have some some wounds on people. Need to go rest. Go oh, back to over here. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to alter this formation. Oh my gosh, they screw up my formation every time. Speaking of formation, actually. Move that there, and we're going to give you a nice bow. An exceptional one. Yeah. Alright, chat, calm down. Where's the dude? There he is. Now, what can I do for you? You see anything you like? Uh, Constantine's room. Whoa. I want to spend the 200. I don't know why Constantine. Oh, because Constantine gives us massages. What are we at? Oh, we're at, um. We're at about two hours here. I can definitely see the FPS is going down. So I'm going to go ahead and restart right now. Actually. 
No, we're not going to restart right now. Because most of the VODs that I've been doing, they're like an hour to hour and 45 or something like, well, you know, I, I could, I can have a two hour VOD. Let's do it. All right. Gonna, you know, do this. Reset the game. There's a, what appears to be a memory leak issue. So I'm going to try to do this every two hours or so. Launching. Dropping frames like a sucker foo, though. I love that. Just fantastical. And we continue. this. And what's that icon? Lava. Whoa. Guess we're not getting inside there. Alright, we haven't been to the back alleys yet. We haven't been to the Bardato estate. We haven't been over here either. Go to the map emporium. That's trapped. Oh, hello. Welcome to my shop. It's such a pleasure to see a new face. Benza bounces back on his heels, a wide grin plastered on his worn face. How might I assist you? What do you do here? Oh, I am a cartographer. I make maps. I'm not half bad at it either. And may the gods forgive my immodesty for saying so. If you need a map of any settled region of the Deadfire, I am your man. And my commission rates are quite generous. It used to be I would take to the sea and do a bit of charting myself. But I haven't the time. Too many maps need making. A shame, too. There's a whole swath of the dead fire I've yet to see. I'm quite keen to write a book, in fact. Oh, but I won't trouble you about that. Excuse my nattering on, won't you? You said you're writing a book? I'm putting together an explorer's account of the dead fire. Or at least the part of it Queen Onekaza's tribe has laid claim to. My book will be the first of its kind. The Explorer's Club will go mad for it. Or, well, that was the idea. It's a fiercely dangerous enterprise, in point of fact, and nobody will agree to char the islands for me. You'd think ship captains would be a bold-hearted bunch. I offered fair recompense. Hansa folds his arms, sighing. I'm not exactly the most powerful fighter, or I do it all myself. 
Still, wouldn't it be wonderful? An explorer's guide to the dead fire. Someday. Put some nice pictures in that book and you got your explorer right here. Do you mean it? This is... Wow! I can't thank you enough. It's a lot of ground. I mean, water to cover. And some of these islands are in very dangerous waters. Despite his words, the gleeful expression on Sansa's face has not faded. Don't worry. I planned it all out. We'll get your feet wet first. With a little experience under your belt, I'm sure you'll get a taste for it. Nothing will stop us. I mean, you. The idea is to explore all the islands that haven't been charted yet, or even named. That falls to you, Aimiko. You can't tell me you've never wanted to name your own island. I thought we could start with the waters around the company outpost at Port Maggi. There are two islands in the region, and nobody's taken much notice of them yet. Once you're back, I'll start filling in my map and adding your findings to the book. Oh, this will be wonderful. Okay. Welcome back, welcome back. It is a pleasure to see you once again. Tell me, how is the sailing? Smooth? Nothing to delay your expedition, I hope. How might I assist you? I mean, would you have to sail? Certainly, certainly. It would be my pleasure. Of course, it's mostly books and knickknacks. Maps I do on commission, you see. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Oh, that is expensive. Way more expensive than I thought it would be. I think I'm going to buy it, though. So nice that you can see what's in these before you buy them. Ooh. I kind of want to bring Aloth back. I don't even see that one. That is very cool. This one. Potential Phantom? Hmm. Cool, 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 cool. Can I just like read these books? <laughs> uh, I don't even need you, man. I can just buy them. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do this. Uh, I'm sure we've got some stuff to sell here. Uh, we have any like junk? Uh, that's ingredients. Doesn't look like we have any junk. There we go. That'll lessen the cost. Hmm, that's 800. I don't even think this is that good. Oh, but it has two penetration on it. I didn't even see that. Yeah, 11 penetration. What a gun. Selling it. Thanks for the spyglass, bro. Oh, look at, look. These maps look pretty good. Okay, everything is stealing. Uh, We'll come back for you, Bren. Bruh. Bruh him. Or Hammerstein? Okay, he's got some hit points. Luminous Adramil. Got a guard, a guard. Cortina. 
Cortina's voice finds you before she does, her barks of laughter and cheerful directives resounding throughout the mill. She flits from worker to worker, offering critique and approval. When she finally spots you, a shadow of apprehension passes over her face. She hides it with a toothy grin. If you are here about the taxes, tell the queen. Oh, you are not the tax collector. She, she narrows her eyes and her hand twitching at the hilt of her blade. What business brings you to my mill? Who are you? Okay. Cortina leans in close, one prodigiously furry eyebrow raised. You go around asking just anyone in Queen's birth personal questions. Maybe you end up dead in a ditch. Have caution, eh? Lucky for you, I am a woman of honor. She gives you a sunny smile and claps her hands together. I direct luminous milling for the Valian Trading Company. It's a nice job, huh? And I'm quite good at it. You want to know more? Buy me a drink first, per guano. Bertina claps you on the shoulder, a playful smile on her lips. What do you do here? Bertina looks about the room with exaggerated wonder, her green eyes wide. She laughs a little to herself and runs a finger across the arm of the chair beside her. She holds the finger up for your inspection. It's caked in shimmering blue dust. We mill luminous, of course. Take big chunks, break into smaller chunks, crush into dust-sized chunks. Per complanquenet, it is really not so complicated. It gives you a condescending little pat on the arm. Peace. Good day. Okay, so all that would be stealing. I think I am gonna make this change. Want that to be tab and highlight interactable. Want you to be left alt. Why aren't you working? Hey. Watch your step. This is not working. Is this alt broken or something? Alt tab? No. Not broken. <sighs> yeah, it wasn't broken because I was using it to stealth. So why isn't it highlighting interactables? Especially since I can, yeah, uh, come on. Why is this happening to me? Ooh, toggle interactables. How about, how about, move that there, toggle interactables, we put tab. Boom. Ah, oh, I was hoping that would be something available. Excellent. Alrighty. So I guess all the non-important people just don't get stuff, so I always know who to talk to. Hooray! 